Okay, so today's uh, video lesson is going to be on painting a, uh, a frog pattern. Uh, I painted this frog pattern on uh, some of my baits uh, recently, and I've been really effective, uh, on, especially on top water baits. Um, <clears throat> and, and you'll be surprised how how easy and uh, uh, and effective this this uh, color pattern can be. Um, I'm going to paint it on a uh, a Pop Max. Uh, popper. It's kind of a knockoff, but uh, it's identical to the one you'll find in the stores. It has water channels in the mouth, and they come out here on the gill. That I've been told that helps to keep the the popper on the water surface as you're as you're popping it. So uh, we're going to start out with um, a white base coat, and I'm going to spare you the, the boring details of painting white on a bait. So uh, I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to paint the white base coat, and then we'll continue from there. Okay, so I got the white base coat on here, and uh, I just use Golden brand uh, titanium white. Uh, I've been using it for a while, never had any problems with it. It doesn't mean that other brands of white paint won't work. That's just what I use. So feel free to use what, uh, what works well for you. <clears throat> um, so the next color we're going to do is a, uh, an opaque deep yellow. And we're going to keep the belly white, so I'm going I'm to paint the yellow just like mid-body and... Uh, and above. It really doesn't take much. I just only have to do one coat here. And we're just halfway down the body, leave the belly white. And that's all we gotta do. And then we'll heat set. Um, all of our color layers uh, with a hair dryer. And I'll show you this once, um, and uh, then you'll just know that later when I'm painting that you should heat set every, every color layer. Okay, um, what I've learned after doing doing lures for so long is um, the best way to get the most realistic uh, uh, color patterns and some depth to your to your colors is to layer different colors. So we have our opaque yellow and next I'm going to do a, um, a pearlized lime green and that's by Createx and with the pearlized it can be kind of thick so you may want to thin it out with some reducer and I use uh, some reducer from Auto Air <clears throat> yeah, just basically just a, a drop mix it in real good so um, I'm going to spray the uh, pearlized li lime green on the top I'm going to leave just a hint of some yellow here so I can show kind of a gradient or a transition between the colors you may not see much but it really does make a difference heat set that. I may even do a second coat more on the top so it's just a tad darker and leave the, the body line here um, a little less paint so I can show that uh, gradient from the pearl lime to the to the opaque yellow. Okay uh, we're going to do one more layer of uh, green and here's one of my favorite green colors it's by, uh, by Wicked uh, and it's a Wicked Detail Moss Green and I use this for a lot of different baits. It actually goes on kind of a lighter green, but the more you layer it on, the darker you get, so you have a lot of control over the color. So I'm going to paint this again on the top and leave just a little bit of the opaque and the pearl lime. All right. Start out with just a little bit, but you can see there it's starting to darken up. To avoid hard edges here on the side, don't come straight at the bait like this. Come up on an angle and get a little bit of that overspray to produce the gradient for you. And it's darkening up nicely. A little more on the back. And even that pearl lime green, the pearl effect is coming through too. 
which is great. All right. There you go. Okay, next step, we're going to add a little bit of detail here. And I like to work from reference photos. If you look at some reference photos of frogs, they have that disc behind their face a little bit. Like, I don't know if it's an ear or a gill or, well, not a gill because they breathe air. So maybe it's an ear or something. So we're going to mimic that by using a stencil. And I just cut out a uh, plastic stencil um, and punched a hole. And I just use a bit of um, blue tape around it so I can hold on to it just a little better. So, and I'm going to use um, a copper color. And at first it's going to look very, um, you know, two-dimensional, but we'll add some highlights later to make it kind of pop a little bit. But, <clears throat> so I'm going to place the stencil. There's the gill there. And sometimes this, this paint takes two coats. So let's hold the stencil and just lightly spray. Now I'm going to do one on the other side too, and I'm probably going to do two coats. When you do the second coat, make sure you line your stencil up perfectly so you don't get uh, a really odd shape. But um, I'll show you what the finished look uh, will be here. Today. Okay, as you can see, here's the uh, that ear pattern I painted with the stencil. I did two coats, and we're going to come back with a, a darker color and give it a little more uh, dimensional look. But because I'm going to spray with white, I don't like to use a dark color and have to clean a dark color and go into a white. Um, so I'm going to go from my light color to my dark. But <clears throat> So now we're going to paint random white spots on the lower body. I've seen people use a paintbrush. You can Obviously you can do that. I don't think it looks as natural. And uh, because with a brush, the paint goes on a little thicker than when you're airbrushing. So um, this takes a little bit of uh, airbrush control, but I'm not going to use a stencil. I am going to hand paint all the, the dots and make the dots kind of a random shape and make them large enough uh, so we can get some black paint in there uh, in, the, in the middle of it. Um, we'll, I'll show you that in the next few steps. So I'm going to paint a few spots, but it's going to be hard for me to show the entire process without my hand getting in the way. <laughs> and uh, so I may just show you a few, and then I'll turn the camera off and, and finish up. But um, So I turn the pressure down a little bit so I have a little bit more control. And, and I use my other hand to kind of rest the airbrush. And just gently get the white paint flowing. that one just a little larger. I'll start continue painting after the compressor turns off. spot. We'll do another one down here. Just random. Anywhere you want to go. Yeah, you can't want to use a whole lot of pressure. You're getting so close. If you get too much pressure, you get too close, you're going to spider wet the paint. We'll do another one right here by the gill. Again, if my hand's in the way, then I apologize. It's kind of hard to do it. There we go. So there's a few. I'll make some more random white dots on the body, and then I'll come back and I'll show you where we go next. Okay, so I got all my white spots uh, randomly painted around the body. I'll just twirl this around for you so you can see what I've done. So, we're making progress. We're getting there. Um, like I said, I'm gonna add just a little bit of detail here on this on this ear. And really, all it is is taking some uh, some black and thin it out a little bit. But I use um, Wicked's uh, Wicked Black, and I'm gonna use the stencil and make sure we're right on top of the original 
circle, and then I'm just going to lightly spray black around the edges here. I'm going to spray more on the stencil than I am on the bait, so I just get a little bit of the overspray um, on the area that I want. I got the pressure down and make sure I'm lined up. Black going in there. Up and around. Alright, well, you know, I'm off a little bit here. But you know, that happens, and I haven't had a bass complain yet. So uh, I'm going to heat set that. I'm going to do the other side, and uh, then we'll move on to one last detail. Okay, so we just finished the highlights around the, the ear. I'll show you the other side. This one turned out a little better. Just takes a little bit of paint, a little bit of overspray to bring that, uh, kind of bring it to life a little bit. All right, our final step is we got to add kind of a black accent to the center of all these white spots. Uh, if you did it with an airbrush, I guarantee you're going to get overspray out of the white, and you end up covering the white with the black. It's not going to look so good, so... Uh, a friend of mine showed me a really neat technique to give you more control over the black. I just took a, a, a paintbrush and I broke off the handle. I'm going to use the tip of the paintbrush and I'm going to dip it. See, so I have a little dish here with some black paint. I use the Createx black, it's a little thicker so it doesn't run. I'm just going to dip the black, uh, or the paintbrush handle into the black. And I want to do, I don't want to do a perfect circle because, you know, nothing's perfect in nature, so I want to Maybe do kind of an odd shape, but just gently, there you go, do a shape inside the white. Yeah, someone can be round, but um, just try it all there, there. What I like about this part is it goes really fast, and the cleanup is easier. Right there, there's more spots here. Sometimes you can just give a little bit of unique shape to that one there, so it looks more natural. That's why I try to paint as close to real forage as possible. But all right, we're getting there. A bit up here. Then when we're done here, we're going to heat set that, and then we're pretty much done with adding the eyes, and I'm going to talk to you about the eyes for this bait specifically, because they're not your standard round eyes. So, just a little more black here. And right there, get more paint. All right, I think I got all the black and all the white spots. Here we go. We're gonna keep the mouth white. All right, so I'm gonna heat set that, and then I'm gonna come back and talk to you about these eyes. Okay, as you can see on this Pop Max um, lure body, the eye here looks a little more oval. And um, when you buy the baits, uh, you gotta buy the eyes for it specifically for it, and that's what they look like here. But um, looks like these are kind of a little bit of a silver and a little bit of red. To me, it doesn't really match the bait, so sometimes you got to modify a few things. So I have these green eyes, these six millimeter eyes, and I am going to use this little cuticle scissor I stole from my wife and cut the eye a little bit to make it make it fit. And I'm going to do that now, and we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like in stone. All right, so I got the eyes installed, and uh, I mean, I didn't cut them perfect, but that's okay. We're going to get some of the epoxy filled in here. Um, regarding the epoxy, here's something that's really important, is <clears throat> you have these water channels in here in the bait, and you cannot 
close those up with the epoxy and I've found that the, the Devcon 2 ton pretty thick and tends to cover that pretty easily. Uh, I also have a thinner type of epoxy um, Enviro, Envirotech light uh, that's thinner and I don't usually have a problem uh, getting the epoxy in the mouth here and then not covering up the, the gill openings here. There's some underneath here too. So I'm going to epoxy this and then I'll show you the, uh, the finish. Okay, I got the epoxy on. Um, I have this forcep um, attached to the back because um, I use the, uh, the E-Tex epoxy. It's very thin. I can't just let it sit here. i got to put it on a drying wheel. So I have attached this forceps, which I got pretty cheap uh, on eBay. I think it was a set of six or something for three bucks. So something uh, maybe pretty worthwhile having. But here we go. We're done with our frog. Um, nice and shiny. The eyes look pretty good. Pretty realistic. So thanks for watching. Subscribe and uh, you know click on some of the ads for me. Thank you.